Open worlds, a beautiful concept that gives a lot of games their charming touch. In a prior video, I showed you how I created the open world for my sandbox crafting game. And now that I had some time to playtest the new world through development, I can say that it was definitely the right choice. But I noticed quickly that the world was getting boring and repetitive. This was because of two problems, the world being too homogenous due to the way it's generated and due to the lack of diversity in vegetation and resources. The world is, theoretically, really really big, but if you keep encountering the same trees and stones in different places over and over again, the world will eventually start to feel repetitive. To make the world less homogenous, I modify the way that it's being generated. And to increase the diversity, I decided to add biomes. But before we start, if you want to support this project, consider wishlisting the game now on Steam through the link in my description. I would really appreciate that. The world for my open world sandbox game is being generated procedurally. Procedure generation means that the world is being generated based on a fixed set of rules. This makes it possible to create large worlds with comparatively little effort. Before, I was generating the world by loading a pre-made chunk from a pool based on a noise function. This means that my freedom for creating the world was limited by whatever the chunk diameter was. Creating bigger structures like lakes and forests was not efficiently possible that way. So I had to get away from loading the world in pre-made chunks and start generating every aspect of the world separately. However, I still want to have some key parts of the world to be consistent throughout the worlds. So I chose to go with a hybrid solution, where I randomly place certain pre-made key components throughout the world and then generating the rest of the world around it. For the new generation of my game world, I use two types of noise. Perlin noise and white noise. 2D Perlin noise is a function that takes in two values, typically the X and Y coordinates, and returns a value between 0 and 1. As you can see, Perlin noise results in a smooth transition between the values, avoiding hard edges. This gives a world a natural and flowing structure. White noise, on the other hand, is a function that just returns a random value between 0 and 1 for each cell. The first step for generating the world is loading the ground. For that, I use white noise by choosing a tile from an array by multiplying the array length with the cell's noise value. I use white noise in this case because I want the ground to look as random as possible and avoid the same tile piling up in the same region. Now that we have a ground, we can start adding some water. For the water, I use Perlin noise. While loading the ground, I load the corresponding Perlin noise value of each cell and define that if it lies below a certain threshold, the cell becomes water. The forests are generated by a separate noise function, but with a similar approach. I take a Perlin noise function, and this time I say that every cell with a Perlin noise value higher than a certain threshold becomes forest. The only problem is that every cell in that area becomes a tree, which results in way too dense forests. To solve this, I use a second noise function, this time white noise, and apply it to the first noise texture. That way I get a general area of forest where not every cell becomes a tree, giving me a less denser forest. All of the other resources and vegetations are generated in a very similar way. The world is now completely procedurally generated, but it still looks very homogenous once you walk around a little. This is because of the properties of Perlin noise. So let's take a look at set Perlin noise function. Let's simplify the noise function by saying that a value above a certain threshold is white and below is black. And let's set that threshold to 0.5 for now. You can see that there's not a lot of detail in the pattern generated by the Perlin noise function. This lack of detail translates to the generated world and leads to the world feeling kind of boring and uneventful. However, there is a way to change that. To create a more complex pattern, I use a trick called octaves. If we take a look at this one-dimensional function, you can see that it is also not very detailed. To make it more detailed, we just take a second function with a higher frequency and a lower amplitude. When adding these two functions together, we obtain a complexer looking function that roughly follows the shape of the first function, but also contains the height variations of the second function. Each of these summed up functions is called an octave. We can do this as often as we want with functions that continuously have a higher frequency and a lower amplitude. This summing up of multiple functions can of course also be applied to our two-dimensional noise functions. Normally, the frequency doubles every octave, while the amplitude is halved to avoid that the small details override the general structure of the function. So the value of a noise function with n octaves is given through the sum of all noise functions of x and y times the frequency multiplied by its amplitude. The problem is that with this, we get values that might be higher than 1. To avoid this, we need to divide through the total maximum amplitude of the function, which is given by the sum of all amplitudes, resulting in this final function. If we apply this to our 2D Perlin noise from before, you can see that with each applied octave, the pattern created contains more and more details. This of course results in a more interesting and less repetitive world when applied to world generation. Saving the generated world is done pretty easily. Every time a cell is generated or modified, I save the value of that cell into a hash table. Now, when looping through all of the cells while loading, I only have to check if a hash table contains a value for a cell and load it when existent. But now, it's time to add the biomes. 
To add new biomes, I had to do two things. I had to implement the generation of the biomes. For example, in the desert, I just lower the frequency and reduce the threshold for water to make it more rare. And a palm tree can only grow in a certain distance to a water source. The snow forest is generated basically the same as a normal forest, just with the difference that some vegetation does not grow, while some other vegetation only grows exclusively in the snow forest. The hard and often underestimated part is creating the graphics. Creating the graphics actually is almost the most time-consuming part of developing my game. On top, I am not the most talented artist, so even after years of pixel art, it takes me a good amount of time to come up with sprites that are not completely horrible. Because of that reason, the vegetation in the new biomes is not that diverse at the moment. For now, I implemented three biomes. Forest, snow forest, and a desert. I'm not sure if I want the biomes to be scattered around the world, bordering on each other like in other games, or if I want them to be reachable through some kind of portal that needs to be found and activated to make the biomes feel more like an achievement. Feel free to tell me what you would prefer in the comments. Each biome has a specific purpose. The snow biome, for example, contains items and materials used for magic and enchantments, while in the desert you encounter a lot of ore that are rare in other biomes. I have to say that even though I've not been playtesting the game for long with the biomes, it does feel a lot more diverse and interesting to play already. I'm going to be adding a bunch of new things to existing biomes as well as new biomes in general. So tell me in the comments what biomes you would like to see added in the future. Apart from biomes and world generation, I have of course also been working on a lot of other stuff for the game. Mostly things that are not that interesting for a video like this, but still important for the game, like UI, sounds, and overall performance. Since there is now a UI for most functions instead of a keyboard shortcut, the game can now also be played by someone else than me. The game in general is reaching a point where I think that the first playable version is not that far ahead, so stay tuned. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, maybe consider subscribing and liking the video. I would really appreciate that. Either way, I hope you have a great day, and see you in the next one.